Hey guys, before we start, a quick shout out to Alpha Dog Nutrition for sponsoring this podcast. Alpha Dog products are now available at dusupply.com and you can use code ALPHADOG15 at checkout for 15% off and a credit for free shipping to try it yourself. Now let's get you to your podcast. Welcome back to another episode of Free Casting. We talk with Naomi Hirsch in Colorado about Initiative 91 and what may happen to houndsmen in Colorado. Then we jump over to California and talk to Dale Tobison about the use of hounds being possible again. This is an episode full of information you will definitely not want to miss. And if you want to catch this on YouTube Live, go to Anecdote of a Houndsman, go to our live section, and you can watch this, and you can watch this pre-recorded of course but when we did it live also don't forget about the first annual arizona hound rendezvous near young arizona at reynolds creek campground i'm pretty sure that's what it is you can go to pick and shovel outfitters.com and register for a dinner if you have any questions send me an email at anecdote of a houndsman at outlook.com enjoy the episode my fancy intro Man, you guys, you guys are so fancy. You Houndsman XP, they got all that fancy stuff all around the little square boxes like you got. I didn't watch them last night. I forgot. Working on my trailer. So I wonder if they missed me. Oh, I know that they, they did. They probably did. <laughs> I watched, I, I just I went and just looked at a little bit. I yeah, I gotta manage my time pretty closely. Yeah. I was gonna watch them. I like to just kind of go through and I like to read the comments and See who's doing what. Then I'll tell you what, though. I'm going to start this show off right now saying I never knew how horrible people could be. There's good people out there. But, man, you you get a show or you have somebody on and people just, they like to just email you or tell you all the bad stuff about somebody. Did, did who, what? Well, just, just can you general. Can you make it public? <laughs> just in general. You know, you get somebody on and they're like well i know his brother or i know that guy he he does this oh or, yeah you know people Je- i tell you what jealousy man oh yeah i mean but, yeah. <clears throat> i need to make an intro Tim. i've been thinking about it but i forget my manager my manager it hasn't made me one yet he just saves it all for his own show <laughs> i need to go in and start clipping a bunch of stuff i can send you some stuff it's just drama drama out there drama you know i got i got someone from colorado on naomi got someone from california on uh dale and i know it's it's came to arizona we've had our problems with all the outlaws and all the antis and it's non-stop i just i just i, I should have sent this picture to me but i'll read it someone posted it on my if you go to arizona working dog alliance on facebook Somebody from the uh, cats aren't trophies. I think that who is that? Carol Baskin, her little posse. Oh they, they yeah, posted I've on heard. they posted on a mountain lion thing, and someone shared it on my one of my Facebooks, and it said no science exists anywhere to support any claim that Colorado needs to trophy hunt or trap wild cats to manage anything or to solve anything. This is a recreational pleasure activity. It is population management of predators or prey. It is not to sustain or conserve populations of public safe. Hang on, I skipped the line. Sustain or conserve populations of predators or prey. It does not make the public safer. And it does not protect pets or livestock or mitigate losses. And it will not produce more deer. <laughs> Any organization or individual who claims otherwise must be held accountable for the integrity of wildlife science and wildlife protection and goals in Colorado. And on that segue, wow. pow. No. There's there Naomi you go. Hirsch. There's someone who can rebut it. Oh man. Oh it's just, boy. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's so stupid what these people think about lion hunting, saying that the science you did. I don't know if you heard that, Naomi, but no, I didn't. No, nah, someone posted a thing on one of my facebook pages and it's that cats uh cats aren't trophies group yeah someone posted from it and uh 
just says that science, like science don't exist. And it, it's, it, science has nothing to do with conservation. It won't help populations of deer. It won't save your pets. It won't make the safer, the public safer. It, it's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it's like they take all of our actual scientific arguments and just turn them around into lies is what they do. They they just straight face lie about um, everything that backs us up scientifically. They'll just either deny it or make up their own story. Well, that's what they're doing. They're making up their own stories and they're trying their hardest to make us they're sound chronic like liars See, we've all talked to those people that like you meet them with a fact or you meet them with um you know the truth and they just lie their way out of it and anyone who knows the truth knows they're lying but they just they gain some followers along the way because people don't know any better unfortunately and that's what tough yeah which is touchy feely things it yeah. is you know and it, we're not exactly we're not thin skinned people like they are. So we can handle a lot of stuff, but man, they can get under your skin no matter how thick it is. You know, it's just when you see stuff posted like that and you see people, I mean, how they, they got enough. Obviously they check signatures on that. They did. Yeah. They got enough signatures to get on the ballot. Um, it'll be on the ballot here November 5th. So where, where's your hat? You my said, hat. can I wear my hat? And you didn't wear your hat. No, I meant, can I wear that persona? No, um, <laughs> I, was like, I don't care. <laughs> I wear a lot of different hats. I wore my UHC t-shirt. I should, I guess, go grab my Sportsman's Alliance hat and throw it on, huh? <laughs> yep. There's a lot of stuff going on over there now. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we should talk about something just a little bit softer because Brett's going to get angry. No, no, I'm not. I just did that <laughs> one time. Well, <laughs> It's just, I, you know, I, I, you, it's hard to read these articles that they're writing because it's so just. So yeah, hilarious. there's some that they'll have out. Um, I don't know. Maybe this is the one that you got mad about, but it's like written like it's a journalist, like a journal paper. And, you know, it has like the the heading and everything. And it's it's written in the uh, context. It tried to make it look like a scientific article is what they did. And it was all just opinion and all just BS and lies. They flower it up with all the fancy words and everything that yep that I don't have to use. <laughs> My vocabulary is <laughs> not that good. No, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't use a lot of words to start with F or <laughs> A. Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah. B. Jared. Yep. Jared's our lion hunting professional. I don't know about professional. I just try hard. <laughs> So what, what's going on there now, Naomi? What, why don't you tell everybody who don't know who you are, who you are first. Okay. Since you didn't wear your hat. Since you didn't literally I didn't wear your hat. hat. So it's not obvious. I'm <laughs> Naomi Hirsch. I am the Associate Director of Communications of Sportsman's Alliance. And I sit oh, cool. on the board of United Houndsmen of Colorado. And also the board of Colorado Trapper and Predator Hunters Association. So I'm... Um, Geez, up to my eyeballs and all of this stuff every day. And well, you know, I, I said I, I'd like to get Dan Gates on, but man, I bet you he's scrambling. Yeah, <laughs> um, you know, this is the type of stuff that yeah, he's still scrambling to do because he needs to get the word out. Um, we've got early voting here in um, in Colorado, so we can mail in our ballots earlier than November fifth. So the, the clock is ticking as of now. November is not that far away. Oh, September, October, November. <laughs> it's early November. So, yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's coming down to the wire. So we've got to get our voice out everywhere. One, for fundraising, because we need money to put commercials in front of Denver voters is really what it comes down to. And we just need to get the word out to all of our web connections anyone who has anyone who can vote in colorado needs to show up why don't you tell us a little bit what happened to get us to this point because you like a little bit from the start not super great detail but yeah kind of what they did because some people probably don't still don't know about it unfortunately yeah um 
I think Dan gave me a stat, less than half of hunters, like people who have hunting licenses, less than half of them know that this is going to be on the ballot in Colorado. So you're absolutely right. Um, so what this CATS group did, it's an acronym, CATS aren't trophies. Um, they started up an organization back in, I think it was September of last year. Um, so I think it's been a year now. And they wanted to put originally they had trophy hunting in the title it gets so convoluted last time i was talking to you it was um, kind of in the midst of that but what they did is they wrote up a ballot initiative they wanted to put banned trophy hunting of mountain lions bobcat and lynx in colorado on the ballot um so coloradans for responsible wildlife management actually went to the title board with a lawyer and got the word tro the words trophy hunting thrown out of the title the reason that was possible is because their definition of trophy hunting that was in the title was all hunting their definition of trophy hunting defined in the title was purposefully killing entrapping chasing anything mountain lions bobcat lynx so the title board actually did say yeah it sounds like you're banning all hunting so that is actually going to be what is on the Colorado ballot is ban all hunting of mountain lions, bobcat lynx. So what happened oh, about a week ago now, uh, they actually got enough verified signatures. So the ballot process here in Colorado, um, you gotta go collect signatures. Unfortunately for this style, um, this type of ballot initiative, they don't need them from all over the state and they can get them all in Denver. So Jeez. that's pretty much what they did. Um, they got enough signatures. They turned in like 188,000. They needed 124 or something. And what the Secretary of State does is take a sample of that and they sample four or five percent. And if that sample reaches a high enough validation rate to match what they turned in, if you're tracking, if <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, so say, so what happened is they reached um, a high enough validation rate with that sample. That means they definitely got 124,000 out of that 188 that they turned in that were valid. And that put them on the ballot. So that's where we're at as of a week ago. Um, now you caught me right before another event. We have a really cool event coming up, Outdoorsman Days. Um, that'll be in Florence here in Colorado uh, with a bunch of different organizations and everything's going to that fight. How, how is the best way to get the word out to the other hunters? Have you uh, all found not, out? So sharing stuff, if you follow Sportsman's Alliance, we'll, we'll alert about it, CRWM, follow the right people and share it a lot. I know um, like not my page, like my audience might get sick of it, but you gotta remember on the back end that boosts that post for them. So if you share it, it doesn't and if you share it all the time for your audience, it might not matter as much. But for that original post, and you guys know this with your um, YouTube channels and everything you guys do, it's all about you know the analytics and the background. And if you can get people to hit that share button, how much it really means and how much that video they put out a lot of really good videos right now. CRWM does um, and our posts with Sportsman's Alliance, how f much farther those go. I would just see. with hitting share. Um, other than that, it's it's just word of mouth. If you talk to five people today and reach out and be like, hey, so there's this thing happening in Colorado. And if they do the same thing, that's that's what they do on, on the other side. You know, we have people that came to gather signatures from Tennessee, Missouri. Like these people just literally hopped on a plane, got to Colorado because they think that we shouldn't be able to hunt mountain lions and bobcats. And so it, you give yeah. it that equivalent. Are are you guys like I? I don't want to make it that personal for you guys. It's kind of mean, but like like who from Tennessee and Missouri? I know um, Chris Powell's been in Colorado multiple times. Like who is it important enough to to hop on a plane and get here and support us? Because it's important to people on the other side, and they did it. So well, people on the other side are usually kind of retired. Well, or liberals and don't really work and it's 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 hoity-toity mom staying at home it's tough yeah 
Yeah, and they got deep pockets, you know, um, when it comes to the organizations. So it's it's an uphill battle. I think it's a battle that we can win, but we just got to keep the pedal down. Do you know how much money you guys have earned for, from Save the Hunt Colorado? Do you know that number? Um, I know the funding effort is going well. The numbers aren't shared with me, um, but I know that the CATS organization just put out a email campaign saying that they their goal is to raise over $2 million. Um, Jeez. So, <laughs> and they've got people like Wayne Vaselli, um, the ex-CEO of Humane Society of the United States. I bet he could come up with that, just drop it out of his bank account. Um, so that's what we're facing. So <laughs> no matter what we have and how well it's going, they're budgets if you're if you look at their budgets i'm working on um you know an eye on the anti page for sportsman's alliance we're going to start keeping an eye on um all of these organizations like center for biological diversity and all of these huge organizations that are just really laundering money <laughs> is what they're doing they have billions in offshore accounts and it's just ridiculous um so I, our fundraising is going well um that's what they say but when you got billions in offshore accounts from multiple other organizations, it's like I said, you got to keep the pedal down. On on y'all's website, do you have like talking points that a person could use? Like <laughs> because we're content creators. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, if there was talking points, there's some things that we could incorporate into some of our videos. That I mean, I just I just looked up. I I'm, I mean, I get like sixteen. I've had like sixteen thousand views from Colorado. Yeah. But it could be I something that we could share. Too. Yeah, I can definitely get some to you. Um, I'm going to say there's any alert that we send out, even like from Sportsman's Alliance, is going to have information in there that's um, good to talk about. Um, it's always good to talk about the safety, you know. Um, it is a safety risk to have I mean, I, too many lions. It'd be nice if, I mean, because I, I mean, the way I would do it, I'd say you guys are idiots if you vote for this or whatever, and that's not what, that's not how you win people over. No, <laughs> no <laughs> so unfortunately, nice you got to be political. Um, <laughs> and, and that's why we have that campaign. Um, you know, we got our stuff together and we're actually running a campaign to meet their campaign. Um, it's called an issues committee and they're running polls and whatever polls the best, they'll turn into commercials, you know, like the whole nine. And it's this entire legal system and, you got to have like organizations that come into it and um, money's got to go very specific places. And that's all above my head. But oh, the man. arguing points are going to be on our websites um, and we'll we'll push them hard. Anything you see from us uh, is, is probably well, I know it's being put out there because a poll said it would do well. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And I can get you guys some. Um, I have pamphlets there in the other room, but I can just share those with you guys as well, too. Do you get the digital copies of them? I bet I can. That would be good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and then at least you could. I, the thing that I'd be concerned about, about uh, the other hunters don't even know about it. Yeah. And uh, I would think it would be good to, to uh, try to share it with more content creators and say, hey, help us out, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a pretty good lineup um, for outdoorsman days. I don't know if you guys want to um, throw that in the show notes or whatever, however YouTube works. I'm not very techy. I'm, I apologize. But it's just outdoorsmandays.com. Let me find it. Um, but yeah, that event is coming up and um, there's going to be a lot of content creators there. So I'm pretty kind of excited about that. I know, um, you know, no matter how you feel about them, they have really big followings. Derek Wolf is going to be there. Cameron Haynes is going to be there. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. And then the Howell guys are going to be there. Um, how about Brian Call? Oh, I don't that's know. A, that's probably you. I, I, I know him. You need to go on one of his podcasts or, or Dan Gates or someone. Just yeah. He, Brian, as a matter of fact, he lives in Colorado, I'm pretty sure. The gritty, yeah. It's called the Gritty Bowman. Gritty Bowman. Huh. Yeah, look him up. He's a neat guy. Yeah, send me his contact. But we've yeah. got um, like Ray Livingston, Mike Costello, Sam Westfall, the Sasquatch Miller guy. Jer Mountain Jer Man. Yeah, we've got a lot of people. Hushin', Hushin' Boys. 
Mm. No, I don't. I mean, that's just the people that are like, you know, like on the poster. I'm not yeah. sure who all is going to show up, but those are the <laughs> ones that were confident enough to advertise. Like, I'm going to be there. Hushin, born and raised outdoors, the hunting public. Those sure. guys all got really big followings in the, in, uh, in the YouTube world, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Some other contacts. Um, I know Dan's uh, probably been on a few of them. He's done like just under a hundred podcasts slash live. He slash probably YouTube has. Thing. Yeah. So, um, I mean, honestly, he's probably hit a few of them. Um, but yeah, we're hoping they all come out because it is great content for one. And, <laughs> um, if you want to look at it that way, but it's, it's a big deal. I mean, well, it's I, a, what bothered me is when you said that the hunters don't, don't even know it's going to be on the on yeah. the, the ballot. And mm -hmm. that's just getting the word out to them, I'm sure. Yeah, because we need them at the at the polls. We need them yeah. to vote. And without every hunter voting, it's going to be a hard, hard sell. So if we yeah, don't get exactly. someone to yeah drive drive down the mountain on uh, election day. And, and I mean, we've got Chris and I are doing a few things to raise some money coming up how late is it how i mean of course you need the money as soon as possible but how late is too late you think oh you'd have to talk to dan on that i know he's buying commercials right now and they just keep getting more expensive um because of you know uh the, just the time frames you know if you buy them earlier they're going to be cheaper uh i mean really anything down to the wire we could start spending on things like radio ads and things like that so yeah. um you know you could always use it uh the thing is it's going to be used because that issues committee disappears um, when ele the election's over. So it will be used towards that campaign. Mm -hmm. um, they're very efficient at that. So just down I think, my they, start, I think they talk to him. Oh, oh. Jimmy Johns. Everyone knows who that guy is. Yeah. Yeah. He spent 700 and some odd thousand dollars on a mule deer tag. Yeah. <laughs> As And just that's just one guy i know guys in nevada that buy mule deer tags for 300 plus thousand has oh, anyone thought about contacting someone that has money to blow you know um dan's more connected than i am he sits in rooms with people that know those people i don't yeah. <laughs> Get it? I, um, i'm not Get it? at that stage in my life <laughs> yeah. but, but like, you can throw him suggestions all day unless he gets a phone number it's it's not going to be helpful, you know. Yeah. Um, didn't but, Jimmy Johns yeah. didn't he do a, a didn't he do a deal with uh, Blood Origins? I think it was. He did. He was on yeah. So and Dan is very well connected with Robbie. So if there was some sort of connection there, I'm sure um, they've already made it. But how how about the game and fish in Colorado? Do they they <laughs> have to stay neutral or what's their they problem? got a gag order? So really? it's not exactly a gag order. It's um. And neutral is actually a position as well. So they cannot hold a position on a ballot initiative unless the governor tells them what that position is. So they can't hold against, for, or neutral. They have to say, we do not have an opinion on this measure. And if they have an opinion, it will come straight down from the governor. And the governor tells Colorado Parks and Wildlife what that opinion is. Um, that's just the way it's written in statute in Colorado, unfortunately, other states are different. I know Wyoming can tell the governor to go away. Um, <laughs> so that would include the state paid biologists or the biologists that they can't say anything. Nope. Oh, see, here I go getting mad. Yeah. Uh, that, that's crazy. Damn that's it, stupid. Naomi. That's stupid. It is Sorry. stupid and because it's they're saying we, you can't it's hold an opinion. Well, they're saying you can't hold an opinion. But yep. Well, you can't you can't use a professional's opinion. Yeah, and that's that's stupid. You're going to talk yeah. to some fat ass guy on the sidewalk and let him decide what's. Well, that, yeah, that, I will say our CPW professionals, the ones um, that have this lion data, they actually are sticking their neck out a bit. They are um, under fire from the cats organization for putting together a new East Slope Lion Plan. Um, they're doing that because it does need updated and they want data on mountain lions on the East slope that they don't have currently. And so the cats is skewing that into all sorts of things, you know, like, Oh, they're trying to blah, 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 yeah. do this and that. And also our, um, fur bearer and predator biologist, um, Mark Vieira, he actually comes to 
he came to the UHC banquet, the United Houndsman banquet, and answered all the questions to the best of his ability. Um, he had a PowerPoint ready to go. Uh, he's he's there to spread the information, the data that they have, and that's something he can do. And um, it's something that they don't that the cats organization doesn't want him to do. But that's because they think facts are opinions, and that's not. Sure. Well, it is. Let me let me read you this thing again. I read earlier for the you weren't on yet, but it's from cats. It says yeah. no science, no science exists anywhere to support any claim that Colorado needs to trophy hunt or trap wild cats to manage anything or to solve anything. This is a recreational pleasure activity that is not population management of predators or prey. It is not to sustain or conserve populations of predators or prey. It does not make the public safer and it does not protect pets or livestock or mitigate losses and it will not produce more deer any organization or individual who claims otherwise must be held accountable for the integrity of wildlife science and wildlife protections and goals in colorado so basically all your science crap is stupid you know? <laughs> yeah that's what that says you know? and they're right they are right on one part in that it will not produce more deer it's not going to produce more deer, but it will save a few. It will. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's just, it's so sad, like to be a biologist, could you imagine like getting your master's degree, even like PhD, you landed this awesome job and I know some of them, you're out trapping bobcats in the Western slope. And these people come in with a ballot initiative saying, we know better than you. You don't know anything. Your life's work is throw it away. Hmm. Could you imagine that? I'd, oh, I'd be heartbroken. I'd be well, really. I think, I think what's worse is when you are a biologist, you went to school, you spent the last 10, 15, 20 years proving these theories to be facts. Your numbers are there. You have evidence and they're telling you you're stupid. And some of the states are telling the biologists, no, 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 no. Let's not say that. Let's not do that. Let's not let anybody perceive what that is you know so they're holding yeah. them back there's just, you know and so on our instagram page on the sportsman's alliance page i pulled some clips from the washington commission when they just had their meeting about wolves up there because federally the eastern side of washington isn't under federal protection anymore it, they're state protected so they had enough wolves um and they're poor Four biologists got on it because, of course, they did the meeting virtually because they didn't want to have it in person because they're scared, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> but right. she got on there and said that the Wildlife Fish and Game Department is um, they brought forth that the wolves should be threatened instead of endangered. That was their suggestion to delist. Well, one of the commissioners, Lorna Smith, which um, Sportsman's Alliance actually has an active lawsuit against. Um, she came out and said, just for a second, she's like, I just want to remind you guys that the governor wrote us a letter asking us to keep the gray wolf listed as endangered in Washington. Well, guess what happened? They're still listed as endangered in Washington. The governor overstepped every biologist <laughs> with a letter to the commission, snuck it in there, and that's what happened. And it happens in Colorado too. And said, "This is what we're going to do, and this is you're going to do it." Yeah. What? What, yeah, what do you? What, you what can you? go watch that reel on our Instagram page. It's pretty telling. It's ridiculous. You're and you, honestly, it made my heart sink a little bit because I was like, "Okay, how do we battle that?" What What do you think would happen if that commission said, "You know what? We're not doing that." What you do you guys hope? think would happen? They'd lose their money. Yeah. Well, they, they'd either lose funding or they'd all be uh, fired. In the, in the positions that are appointed positions, they'd just be removed and replaced. Yeah, if they're appointed positions, they'd be out of there. Hmm. So your your governor appoints the Colorado Commission and the Washington Commission, most wildlife commissions. Yeah. So it's a slippery slope. It's like not even a slippery slope. It's a it's a cliffhanger. You got about four inches of of wall to walk across on that on that, and if you're not holding on to something which is basically the governor's hand. And if that governor lets go, you're done. Do you yeah. guys, I totally miss, we're talking about commissioners and everything, right? And appointed. Yeah. And them saying, oh. th them making the decision for the commission saying, 
or the biologist saying, no, you can't do that. We're going to not do that. Gotcha. Okay. I, when you guys were just talking about commissioners, do you guys remember when California lost its bear hunt in 15, 14? With 13. Dogs? 12. 13? Yeah, oh, so 2012 is when it was yeah, 12, voted on, and uh, it was the last season. Was it 12 or 14. You know, I got a guy coming on tonight that was 2012, and then 2013 well, is the first he'll season. He'll know more about dogs. this than anyone then. The California commissioner for hunting came to Arizona, shot a mountain lion in Arizona, kept yep. the mountain lion at his brother's house, the mountain at his brother's house or father's house in Arizona, because you can't take a mountain lion back to California now. Uh, yeah, it's been that way since uh, 91, 94. Yeah. And since he shot that mountain lion in a legal state, did everything legal, he was still removed. And then yeah, right they, after that, the bear They removed him and appointed a anti-hunting commissioner. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, yep. how the hell do you win? Well, first of all... Um, <laughs> we have to figure that one out right now. Yeah, you, know? you win by to... bringing lawsuits. Um, how, that's something how, how that are you guys how are you planning oh that's another thing you were going to talk about too yeah yeah so um yeah sportsman's alliance has been really good at that uh we actually hired two um people for a litigation team here recently and that's like the direction that we're going um so we do have an active lawsuit against um a commissioner in washington lorna smith that one's really interesting because we want it um, and then she came back and appealed and it's kind of stuck, you know, in lawyer limbo right now. Um, but yeah, so the most recent one that we're doing is Sportsman's Alliance is actually suing the CDC um, for some rules that they put into place on dog importation uh, from other countries. So starting back on August 1st, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, any puppy or any dog that comes into the United States has to be six months old. And any of you guys, houndsmen, know that you get a puppy at six months old, there's so much you've already missed of that dog's life. So this completely shuts down. There's multiple breeders in Canada that sell to um, United States houndsmen, and they, they can't anymore. They're shutting their entire operations down because they can't sell puppies anymore to everybody that they used to. Um, yeah. It's, That's it's after ridiculous. that bonding period with the dog. Exactly. So yeah, as it stands right now, um, the CDC and Health and Human Services uh, state that the puppy or the dog has to be six months old. It has to be microchipped and then all of your other um, normal stuff like the, the shots and things. But I'm microchips is another thing. You have to, um, castration or, um, uh, you know, having a female spade. Um, I'm not sure that one. Um, I think they can still be intact, but um, it, just like six months. I mean, as a breeder, how are you going to hold every dog for six months, too? Yeah. That's just not feasible. And it's actually not just for breeders. It's for any hobbyist. So say you and I want to go up to British Columbia on a hunt. We can't bring our dogs back unless they're microchipped. Hmm. So I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> we we got we got real mad about it, and we don't like to be pushed around. And I'm pretty proud to work for Sportsman's Alliance because they come around and say, "Wait a minute, let's do something about this." So we put out the intent to sue late last week, and we put in the paperwork today. We are suing the CDC um, to get this turned around. Well, thank you. That's reason awesome for that. What's the reason for that? Do so they they're reason reasoning, why they're doing the six months? Yeah. So, and it gets in a little bit into the weeds on this part, but pretty much there is places where dog importation is an issue. Um, the adoption agency in this country is kind of crazy. It's a, what, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a business. The adoption agencies are, are just businesses. They're importing dogs mm -hmm. from who knows where. And I'm not saying that these dogs don't need help also, but they're being imported illegally. They have all sorts of issues just so people can make it. Last time I tried to adopt a dog when I was like in high school and didn't know any better from a place, it was like $300. <laughs> so they're, they're businesses. They're, they're flying these dogs in. So yeah, there's an issue, but it's, um, they're handling it with this wide brush, this blanket, putting it over everyone. And it's, it can be similar to like a gun control debate. 
because you're just going to go and say every person who's doing things the right way, anyone who likes to follow laws, you now cannot do this because we have an issue somewhere else. Yeah. So um, that's my understanding. What they're trying to correct is that um, adoption agency bringing stuff in. Um, but that's just not the way to go about it. You don't you don't want to hurt the hunter, the houndsman, the, the, the hobbyist, dogs, the recreator. Yeah. 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 I'm sure, of course, they left a loophole for government agencies because they're always going to do that. But it doesn't – if if you're not also adding that for the people that are the, the breeders of those working dogs instead of just the importers of those working dogs, then you're, you're hamstringing your whole country. Yeah, I mean, you got the Drothars in Germany. There's a bunch of pointers out there, the Hyde Terriers. Mm -hmm. um, there's a really big, I don't know if any of you guys run Beagles or know anybody who runs Beagles. But Missy there's Fix. a big Missy Beagle Fix. up there also. And she's one of our plaintiffs um, because, yeah, it's just shutting, shutting her whole place down. Franco's Beagles, but. It's crazy. Yeah. That, and I say it all the time, death by a thousand cuts. Hey, I mean, at least we're doing something about it, you know? <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to push on this ballot initiative thing. Unfortunately, things right now are going the legal direction. It's just how lost is the public in Colorado. And I'm weary about that. And you can go straight to Sportsman's Alliance and donate. They got make it real easy. So I just did that again. And then we're going to raffle off a dog, a puppy at our rendezvous. We're going to have two of them to raffle off. So cool. everybody who's listening, get on there and go donate. Sports some. Online, yeah, our membership's $35 a, a year. It comes with a year of a hunt stand pro. So it's, it's That's pretty awesome. Important thing. A lot of people don't understand is if you do the memberships. Yeah. Like, I'm a member. You know, I'm part of like the Rocky, or the the Bighorn Sheep Foundation. Like I, you know, the Rocky Mountain Elk. All those rely on that money. Any hound association. Yeah, and yeah, it, UHC. Our memberships are fifty dollars a year. Um, and like with Sportsman's Alliance, you get so much more than we have a membership magazine that comes out quarterly, and you, we have a newsletter that you guys can actually get to see what we're doing. Like the CDC thing, none of you guys knew it. And I think it's a big story. Um, yeah. The, the story in Colorado, we were talking about how a lot of hunters don't even know about it. Well, we'll, we'll put out alerts. We'll keep you updated. Um, and to me, 35 bucks a year, I'm like, just to stay updated that, and you don't even have to do that. You can be on our email list for free, but I, to me, it's worth 35 bucks a year to be a member. Um, for sure. Cool. Guys, it's Wednesday night. I have to bug out early, so I promised my wife. I'm trying <laughs> to get out of here for that Californian gets in here. <laughs> yeah, the, he might not come on if I'm here. I know. All well, right, guys. Thank you. There he is. Thanks for All what right. you're doing. Uh, yeah, good, night, Brett. good to it's, see it's you. Great. I haven't talked to you yet. So we'll see you. Thanks, guys. Hasta luego. See you later, Brett. All right. There's Dale. Dale jumped on us right as he went off. There you go. I was I was waiting for him to leave. <laughs> He's not that bad. He's just a grouchy old redhead. Him. Take takes a shot at the Californian as he leaves. That's nice. <laughs> he does he does that a lot, actually. And it's actually not just Californians, it's everybody in general. There you go. Yeah, I, I'm I'm nothing special. So I, I, you know, being a Californian, what do you think of old Colorado? What they're going through right now, Dale? Uh it's just it's just awful. It just you know, it gets to the point of, of a ballot initiative. I mean Bottom line is, I mean, as, as sportsmen, we, we are always, you know, can't raise the money that they can raise. The uh, the amount of time and effort they put into these things just to take to force their beliefs onto the, everybody else and the, the BS and the propaganda that they, they use to get it done. We, we've fought those battles in California for, you know, forever. So, yeah. The, being a hound, a houndsman, a horse owner, and, and a small ranch owner in Northern California, I'm uh, 45 minutes from a ski resort, and I've been to the beach all of a handful of times in, in my life. So I'm not I'm not your typical Californian. It's getting to be that way in Colorado anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's it's just it's crazy. Like I said we 
we're we're shrinking. You know, I, I hate to admit it, but we are a dying breed. Yes. Well, you know, and as as the generations get more technology, a lot of people just aren't going out. They're not just no. not going out no more. You know, there's people who are know. dogs. Huh? I don't know if we're shrinking because here, I mean, I see a lot of people getting into it actually, but the unfortunate part is the cities are not stopping their growth. They're growing way more than even if we stay steady, you know, it's the cities just continue to grow and people continue to migrate to those cities. And even if we continue our numbers, it's, it seems like it's never going to be enough. Yeah. <laughs> Every time we get a Californian on it, it feeds back. Yeah. Um, Try to get me on back in a year and that'll happen the same way. Colorado. <laughs> I don't know why. Hmm. Rowdies don't do it or Jared's. Yeah. I'm sitting in uh, California right now, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> It's good. Yeah, but you're not. You don't live there, so maybe that's what it is. Oh, I don't know what it's. It's true. The the virus. Maybe is, I've been cured. Maybe you don't have his uh, noise cancellation off too. Sometimes that helps. Mm. Anyways, money. Money's a big deal. You guys need money. Colorado needs money, and that's what Dan yeah. has always talked about. Is he yeah. wants five million dollars to fight that, and another five million to fight somewhere else. And oh, yeah. there's enough hunters. There's plenty enough hunters to to provide that. Absolutely. And it's, that's like the frustrating part to me, you know, um, and he, he just talks about how many people put in for tags and yeah. it's tens of thousands and your application fee is eight dollars. Well, say if it was only ten thousand people, eight dollars, if they gave that to CRWM, he'd, he'd have 80 grand just like that. Like people put in for tags and we have, I wish I knew the number, but way more than 10,000 people putting in for tags every year. Just Colorado alone. It's it's probably 100,000 people, I bet, non-residents, yeah. whether buying tags or, or just bonus points. Yeah, yeah, and, and they're not cheap either. And, you know, yeah. like we talked earlier, those people that'll drop 300 grand on this tag or that tag, I mean, I'm not going to say that they aren't putting towards a fight because I know that there are some people chipping in like that. But we need everybody to, otherwise we can't do this. Their well, the other side's pockets are so deep that we need to bounce back to them somewhere and it's yeah. going to take money. Even if everybody just did, you know, say five bucks a month, you know, what's mm -hmm. five bucks? It's that one Starbucks. It's not even a Starbucks coffee. It's like no. probably a quarter or a half of, of, of dang Starbucks nowadays. Yeah. So, or, you know, yeah. A third of what a burger costs. All right, don't get a burger that that day after work. Make a freaking bologna sandwich. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the well, website that's... makes it easy enough. The Save the Hunt Colorado website, and there's a big donate button right there. And yeah, and make it just drive by Starbucks next time, you know, and just five bucks and hit the donate Dang, button. Gonna... Man, I'm like three, four hundred deep. I bought that whiskey. That was a hundred dollars yeah. by the time they got to me. I am too. I, I'm. I mean, like people ask me, "Oh, how much did you donate?" I was like, "Well, I I bought that whiskey. I've driven myself to all of these events. Yeah. I've, and, and I mean, my gas money at this point is probably more than I want to know about. Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm here. a member of all of these organizations. I sit on the board. I drive myself. Yeah, sitting meetings. on the board is more than anybody. That that's more than ninety nine point nine nine percent of us are doing yeah. right there. Yeah. Just, and, just um, you know, organizations like this are willing to open up. And if you're willing to help, they're willing to involve you, whether it be a volunteer opportunity. I mean, Dan's going to need help setting up the stage, setting up all the tables, chairs, you name it at this event. So there's places that if you don't have the money for a Starbucks coffee that you can't divert, <laughs> there's places you can help um, just on socials, too. A lot of people don't even hit the share button anymore because they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm old news. I'm over it. But right. just, um, so I noticed the, the lack of engagement. Right. So when it yeah. first started, you'd share stuff and you get, you know, out of the hundred or so hunters, you're getting 15 or 18 likes or shares. Now it's lucky to get one. Yeah. Same people. You, you're lucky to get one person liking it, one person sharing it. It's people are just being lazy turds. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, when is that event? 
when is it, your next event? Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday. Outdoorsman days. Yeah. Was that 10th and 11th, right? The 10th and uh, no, 9th and 10th, I believe. Ninth Friday and, and Saturday. Here. They have a website, too, if you can find it. Uh, it's pretty. I, I would just Google Colorado outdoor outdoorsman days. Outdoorsman with an A. Is that, is that what it's called? Yeah, Colorado outdoorsman days. I would text it to you, but last time I tried to mess with my phone while I was doing this, it kicked me off. <laughs> Colorado outdoorsman <laughs> Colorado outdoorsman days dot com. Yeah. August ninth and ten. Yeah. Right if anybody's there. in Colorado, you gotta you gotta go. I'll be there. There's gonna be a, a huge lineup of people there. Um, a banquet, auction, you know, the whole nine. Or unless you're cool like Chris Powell and just drive over there. Yeah. <laughs> at it there. You see, there you go. If you're in Colorado, Colorado Outdoorsman's Days.com. Go help Dan set up. There'll be a kissing booth with Naomi there, too. <laughs> yeah, I'll slide Dan in there. See how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't there might be. The <laughs> There's rumor of a like a legitimate um, like dunk tank, you know, like those tanks oh. of water that you throw in the ball. There's rumor that one might be there. Um I don't know for sure yet. I wish I did. I I have to update you guys, but we were gonna do like a dunk the houndsman and have, oh, have yeah. houndsman sitting up there, and we were gonna take that thing to Boulder and see how much money we can raise with the hippies in Boulder, and be like, all right, yeah. <laughs> twenty dollars to dunk a houndsman. <laughs> take it. To, you need to take it to a cats event and let them give you the money to fight them themselves. Boulder is pretty much a twenty four seven cats event. So oh, that's, that's well, where we John, would be. John said, Chris, you need to get the elk, deer, bird, and trappers to help donate. You know, I don't think those guys understand. And I, this is what drives me crazy. I hear it 99% of the time for California. It's a waste of time. And I've always said one day California would get their hounds back. And no one believes me. One day they will. You got 80,000 bears. For two, they say it's not even worth it. You're going to lose anyways. And I'm like. Okay, Mr. Elk Hunter or Mr. Deer with, Hunter. Or with that hunter, mentality, you you're never going to win. You and you think they're not going to come after you? And, and giving up. Yeah, it's stupid. But if they showed up and they said, poor little birds, that's cheating. You can't have a pointer. Why do you have a pointer? Big. Those are big money guys. And then they're going to be asking the houndsmen for help. Yeah. You, you, know, what, fishermen, you, you shouldn't after. be using fishing poles. That's, yep. that's cheating. Yeah. You, should, you shouldn't be using a... You shouldn't be using a muzzle loader that shoots 500 yards. You shouldn't be using a yeah. bow that shoots 150 yards. They'll yeah. come after those guys when they're bored and they successfully start chopping everything up. Exactly. Absolutely. There was already an article um, saying that mountain lion and bobcat banning the quote trophy hunting of those doesn't go far enough. And they're calling the Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep our state animal and, and the black bear and saying like, why aren't these trophies? Why aren't we trying to support these? And that article ran as an opinion piece in one of the big newspapers here in Colorado. So that's exactly their plan. There's a little bit of foreshadowing there. Anything, you guys aren't even allowed to kill the lynx, right? No, we're no, not. It's um, federally, those are federally, federally protected. protected. Yeah, they did the same in Arizona. You can't kill jaguar. You can't kill lynx. You know, you might as well put leopard on there too. Yeah. Or, or giraffes or rhinos because you can't kill them anyways. Yeah. Ah, uh, you're muted. You're muted, yeah. Gail. No, nope. did I mute you? No. Still <laughs> you muted him because of the crackly. Yeah, but I didn't mute him. He'll say muted. Hmm. I think it's his phone now. No more got quiet. It's that California internet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You might have to. Here, let me remove you and bring you back in. Again. Again. I know. Nothing? You're not muted? Huh. I don't know what happened. You might have to log out and log back in. I don't think still can't hear you. I think California don't want us to hear what he has to say. Probably. Mm -hmm. Probably listening to him and shut him down. Well, I've been told to be quiet on some stuff, too, from California. So yeah. it'll come out. It'll come out soon. You know, the bad time. thing is. We have to be real quiet about what's going on because them people, they just go out and say what we're doing because they got the support. They got, there's more people. What is it? 15% hunting our hunters, only 15% United States, something I'm, drastic. I'm not sure. I think it's lower than that. 13%. Is that what you're saying, Jared? Three, three, three or 5% of the U.S. population. 
three or five percent of U.S. population are hunters. That's what I the thought. Same is, the, and then the still... same is to anti-hunters is three to five percent. Yeah. So ninety percent of the population. Ninety percent of the population has no clue what's going on with animals. Yeah. All ninety-five. Yeah, that's and what I so, tell my undergrad students is you got three to five percent on either side and you got 80 to 90 percent in the middle. And what do those guys do? They vote. Well, it's like a, and, it's like YouTube. It's like YouTube, though. A good thumbnail and a good title. You're going to yeah. click on it. And those titles, they got to watch those titles. You know, here, save, save wildlife, help conserve all wildlife. They're going to vote yes on it. Sounds good. They don't read the fine print. Well, then let's start doing that, too. Yeah. We, yeah. That's what exactly. I say. And it's all about timing, too. Like when United Houndsmen of Colorado got our website up and running, the actually the, the state that was watching it most was California. And what do you I mean? It's pretty obvious what's happening there. You know, <laughs> we're getting 50 website views a day and 41 of them are from Los Angeles. That's a little sketchy. So they are watching everything we're doing. Yeah, all the time. there's probably one of them here. <laughs> what do you think, Jared. Dale? Jared, Jared. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wouldn't surprise. Like I said, you've got to be so secretive about what you do. You don't know. You know, I said who you can trust and who you can't. So, everybody, hear me now. Yeah, hear yeah. you loud and clear. Okay, great. So, yeah, I'm kind of yeah. kind of in the sticks up in the foothills, halfway between uh, Sacramento and Reno, and the, up there out of Grass Valley. And so, it's a it's a little sketchy for the internet access. So. It's probably what's going on. Ninety percent of my houndsmen that get on here live in the sticks and barely have internet. <laughs> oh yeah, they're all holding their phones up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got a so, I've got a big rock in the front yard that that works real well as as a booster. So yeah. <laughs> so what do you got going on over there in California? Well, we lost our hound hunting for for bear and bobcat. In uh, 2012, Senate Bill 1221, um, I went I went to the, our capitals fighting, doing the grassroots lobbying thing at least 20 times. My wife was in there at least 30 times. She uh, in turn ended up dry, uh, joining our Nevada County Fish, uh, Board of Fish and Wildlife uh, to to work with that. She actually chaired that committee for four years. First woman in uh, California to do so. Um, but we lost our hounds at that point. But there is a provision that they left in there to uh, to try and get things back. And we're, we're trying to work through that. I've got three proposals hitting the commission. Uh, I got approval for one of the three just this afternoon. Uh, the other two I should get any time to uh, be able to start up what they call a hound tag program to uh, allow us back in the woods um, through the through our commission. So we'll see how it goes um, right now. Would that be our, similar our to what's going on in Idaho for the non-resident? houndsman just a, is it a, a license or a tag like a uh, deer tag or pig tag no it's a it's a uh, it's a tag that, that will allow you to pursue bear um not bobcat but the bear um through our regular bear season we've got a, a really long bear season it starts with uh, the opening of general deer season which is normally late september and runs through the last sunday in december so like i said we've got a we've got a nice long bear season when we used to run hounds we you know it was great but they uh, once they took that now and they kept the season the same. They kept the quota the same. And the last year we ran hounds, 2012, we took 1,962 bear. Our quota is 1,700. It shuts down. It's the only set we've got that they keep tabs on the bear, right, a tab of the validated, and they will actually send out notices when they feel that they've reached that quota. Um, we had a think two or three years before we actually lost it all together that they actually shut the season down early uh, where we, we had hit our 1700 bear and the last year like I said they went 1962 was the uh, the take for 2012 um so what we're hoping to do is be able to open up uh the hounds uh, once general deer season closes which actually works out pretty good they've got california in their rules you can't run more than one one dog per legal hunter during general deer season so what we're shooting for is the monday after the closure of, of general deer season which is uh right about the the um runs uh six five weeks six weekends at least for our zones here so it kind of varies from from zone to zone but that'll basically get us in the woods for all of november and december 
uh, with the hounds up until that time that you can, you can still still hunt bear, you know, hunt them any way you can without dogs. Um, at that point, my second proposal is to start a training season that opens up once the closure of general uh, bear season and closes and that run up until the end of February. Uh, because after that point, the sows start coming out of their dens with their cubs and we don't want to be have any any potential conflicts with our dogs and the and the cubs and a, and a sow defending our cubs. Uh, my understanding is Idaho has had some issues in the past, and and we're just trying to alleviate some, you know foresee some of the potential problems. So that's why it's it's uh, sort of just for the two months before the sows come out, according to the uh, the new uh, uh, bear management or conservation plan for bear in California that sat, most of the sows come out with March through May. So. We're hoping to be out of the woods by that time. And then uh, my third proposal is to do away with the quota altogether or at least raise the quota. Because if we've got, they, they figure us for about, six, they're, the numbers they're saying is 65,000 plus bear. They're some, ranging somewhere between 50 and 81,000. Um, they'll never get that that number down if they don't raise that quota. So, well, they're never, and we've got bear problems. The quota's not being met already. So what there's got to be some other way other than raising the quota. Because if you're not meeting the quota, raising the quota is going to do nothing, I would think. Uh, what about it's, like a spring season or something? Or baiting? Uh, there, I don't never happen. Baiting would never. Yeah, but if they get yeah. your hounds back, they were meeting that quota. Yeah, so exactly. Uh, yeah, but anyway, I got we, I got a little guy. I got to go tend to. It was <laughs> nice, nice meeting you guys. I got a nice six month them. old in the other room. So, so what, what can what can we do to help out Colorado right now? Hey, go to sportsmansalliance.org, um, save the hunt, colorado.org, um, or I think that one's a dot com. Dot Either com. way, CRWM, Sportsman's Alliance, uh, sign up for those uh, alerts or our newsletter. We send them out weekly, and that way you, you keep updated on stuff, especially like the big hitters, the CDC stuff, um, things that we should, really should know about. Uh, sign, sign up. Well, thanks for coming on and giving us your hour full of Colorado information. Yeah, thank you guys. I'll be listening here. I want to hear more about this California stuff. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, yep. Naomi.